My name's David Scott, uh, D-A-V-I-D-S-C-O-T-T. It's, it's just, you know, cut me in half and it's got scientists written all the way through like a stick of rock. You know, it's, that's, that's the way I am. I mean, I can think of all, you know, there's, you think, oh, that sounds like a nice job. You know, hey, so I enjoy walking in the dales. Wouldn't it be great to live in the dales and have some kind of job doing that type of thing? But then I find myself, you know, doing things like, you know, measuring dry stone walls or wondering how all the stones tessellated together. What's the symmetry of that? You know, look at the crops of there. What's there? What's the nutrient level of that? Why is that growing better, better up there rather than down there? Uh, what bird's that? What's, what's doing that? What sheep are those? <laughs> and, you know, it's just that inquiring mind, you know. Um, on a desert island, I'd probably end up grinding my, you know, making, turning the sand into glass and grinding my own lenses, making my own telescope, you know, you know, you know all those, those sort of things. Um, you just do it. Uh, I was very much into sort of space stories, spaceships. Um, I've wanted to be a scientist ever since John Pertwee was a doctor. Um, it was just absolutely everything I wanted to do. Well, I had the classic chemistry set and sort of managed to um, blow up parts of the kitchen. Um, I um, had, uh, you know, the microscope and I'd go around and try and dissect most of the garden and to have a look at that. I'd also read about it. Um, I was really, really, you know, wanted to know how, how things worked. Why did cells divide? Nobody really, I mean, certainly when I was starting to look at about 10, 12, it was a time when Paul Nurse was starting to ask these very same questions. <laughs> so, of course, you know, there weren't really any answers out there. Um, you know, what, why can't, you know, why a species, why, sorry, why do you have species? So why can't, you know, dogs and cats have babies was a very basic question I can remember. Um, and also how things were constructed. Uh, <laughs> although um, I think my father would uh, test, give a testament to the fact that I used to take most things apart but not know how to put it together. I really wanted to know how things worked. My current job title is Lecturer in Physical Biochemistry, which kind of has physics, bio biology and chemistry all in one go, which pretty much defines what I, my approach to science. There are certain categories of problems which are characterised as, shall we say, protein ligand, where a ligand is something that binds to the protein in a, pro protein, in a process that's called ligation, therefore it's a ligand. That ligand can be a cell, it could be another protein, a small molecule, a bit of DNA, carbohydrate, okay? But at some point, there's like a recognition process going on. So imagine having a bunch of keys. Only one of them is going to open your car or your office door, okay? But no, don't do both, right? And that's what happens very much in the cell. Specific things bind to specific things. And we want to understand that process. And we want to understand it at the fundamental level, but not just that, how that informs the biology, so we have to always keep in mind, if you like, the small picture of, if you like, um, best way is analogy of a car. You know, you have to keep in mind of, you know, how your spark plugs work, you know, and all those materials. But you have to keep also in mind the journey you're taking. Well, I've got a grant application to go in, which is to keep one of my current PhD students on. Um, so that's a very big challenge. And that's the most immediate one because that has to be in uh, the end, uh, end of the next month. After that, um, my, uh, my new son will be born <laughs> at some point, due date 16th of November. I've also got to slot in um, a trip to the new synchrotron facility down in Oxfordshire, which they've managed to schedule the day before the due date at the moment. So I'm trying to get that changed. <laughs> uh, and I've got to submit at least three papers as well, which I'm trying to do, which obviously is the basic currency of how we communicate our science. Um, you don't do press conferences, you don't do uh, on your web page, you send it to a journal, it gets peer reviewed, it gets published, people read it. So the other challenges I've got is that I've got to fly around the world. I've got to fly to a conference in California, from then on to see my collaborator Jeremy Tame in Japan and, his, uh, and, and one of his colleagues, Ito. Um, to look at some sort of structural stuff with this protein ligand stuff. I'm spending two weeks there, and then I fly back. I've also got two PhD students writing up their thesis, and they've both got to get through. 
which is going to be exciting uh, because it, <laughs> certainly for me it's the one time you always seem to fall out with your PhD supervisor you you know you're right you're under a lot of pressure you're trying to write this massive massive document trying to get it right and of course you know your PhD supervisor has got a lot of experience in this and you have to phrase the way you're trying to do this properly so that's going to be you know a certain amount of I mean, possibly human drama and tension <laughs> in there as well and also we're trying to keep um, we're writing a set in another there should be at least another couple of grant applications as well and throughout this year we'll hear whether we've been funded or not and whether the papers have been accepted or not and that's going to be quite exciting or <laughs> well it's been quite exciting if we get funded but on the whole I don't know I mean it's, it's tough getting funded I'm nervous <laughs> you know, um, the one thing about uh, being an academic is that people assume that uh, you are sitting in some kind of ivory tower and sort of you have no real responsibility, that you're walking around, you know, with no socks on, you know, and you're forgetting what day it is. In fact, the truth is, it's like running a small business. Uh, you have income and outgoings and you have cash flow. And if you don't keep that up, the people that work for you will no longer be employed. And you are, they are under your care. You know, I've got a postdoc, postdoctoral researcher and a technician and four postgraduate students. Uh, five postgraduate students, actually, now, because I'm sharing another one. Um, and they've all got to be care uh, cared for. On top of that, we also run an MSc course with lots of administration and there's undergraduate teaching. And I sit on a variety of research committees. So it's, you have to fit all of these and juggle all of these things together. Um, I would like to discover um, fundamentally how smell works. I'd also like to discover in the fun, some of the funny organisms I work on how they process their information from the environment. Um, which is, you know, and I'd also like to discover at a fundamental level how how molecules recognize each other which is a really really open and big problem um it's not the sort of thing that's going to uh you know get your headlines in the newspapers or anything like that but if you solve it you know it's a you know it is a huge thing i found out fairly rapidly once i was doing a phd the best way to clear a room was to describe what i was doing <laughs> you know uh I used to have the four second rule. If their eyes hadn't glazed over in four seconds, then they usually you'd continue. And then I'd come up with a little, little sort of analogy to what I was doing. And then I'd just say I was working, doing a PhD and change the subject. I've been, I've been married to Helen now for um, nearly 11 years. Uh, we have three children. Uh, Lu Lucy, Ben and Charlotte, um, who are six, four and two respectively. And a little surprise happened earlier this year and with number four, who is going to be a boy, will arrive in uh, about a month and a half.